What is the purpose of a shul, of a synagogue in Chutz Laaretz? I want to share with you an unbelievable insight into what a shul and a synagogue and a community center is all about in the diaspora, especially today. And this insight comes from one of the great commentators in the Torah, the Kliya Kar, Rabbi Freim of Lunchins. He was a chief rabbi of Prague, of the Maral of Prague. And in his beautiful commentary, the Kliya Kar, in this week's Pasha, on the Shema, the second paragraph of the Shema, he says an unbelievable thing. He says, if you read the Shema carefully, the second paragraph, it explicitly states at the end of the second paragraph, that long life is promised to the Jewish people, al ha'adama, only in the land of Israel. And so much so that the great sage, Rabbi Yochanan, when he visited Babylon, it says in Masichet Brachot Avchet, he said, How can it be that there are elderly people living a long and good life in the diaspora? He said, After all, we have an explicit promise that it's only in the land of Israel. And the Gemara there answers and says, Since people get up early and go to shul and spend a lot of time in the shul, they have long life. Says the Kliakar, you didn't answer the question. The question was that it says in this week's parish in the Shema that there's long life only in the land of Israel. How can it be that in Chutzlar's people live long? And what was your answer? They go to shul. Shkoyach that they go to shul. But the promise of long life is only in the land. And listen to this unbelievable words of the Kliakar. He says, from here you see that Admat Beit Knesset in Chutzlar's, the very land of a shul in Chutzlar's, Admat Eresh Yisrael, is the land of Israel itself. It is part of the land of Israel because that's the reason why if you go into a shul, it's like you're in the land of Israel and you get long life. Amazingly, I saw that the Maharsha, one of the great Achronim, says exactly the same thing in the famous Gemara, which says that Aditin Atidin Bate It says in the end of Masechet Megillah that in the future all the shuls and learning centers from Chuslaris will come to Israel. And he says exactly the same thing. Why Dafka the shuls? Because the shuls are part of Eretz Yisrael. How can we explain this? How is it that a shul specifically is part of Eretz Yisrael? Now listen to this amazing idea how we can explain it today. An embassy. Every single one of us knows that the, the Israeli embassy in every country around the world, it is international law, even though it is geographically not in the land of Israel, it is considered extraterritorial Israel, as is the embassy of every, any country. So if you have a homeland, the homeland, so to speak, can have a an embassy, a part of the actual land, a, a mini extraterritorial land in another geographic location. So it seems this is the principle. A shul in Chutzlaresh is a spiritual embassy. Just as the state of Israel has diplomatic political embassies, every single shul is a mini Eretz Israel. It's supposed to be a spiritual embassy of the Jewish people. Not only a Mikdash Ma'at, not only a small sanctuary like the Beit HaMikdash, but a mini Eretz Israel. And how relevant it is today. Today we all know that so much of anti-Semitism is about anti-Zionism, severing the connection between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. And a shul, especially today, needs to be exactly the thing which brings them together. When you walk into a shul, you should feel a part of Eretz Israel, a part of the state of Israel. It should feel like an embassy. It should be connected to what happens in Israel, it should be praying for Israel, it should be people should be visiting Israel, the leadership of the shul and the members should all be deeply connected to Israel. Every single one of us in Chutz and all of our leadership and every shul is indeed a spiritual embassy of the land of Israel, fighting the battles of Israel and standing up for everything that it is that the state of Israel and the Jewish people stand for today. Shabbat Shalom.